All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the DreamBot L10 Ultra. Oh wait, DreamBot L10S Ultra. Where do they get these names from, right? Like it's just, this is crazy. This is like they have a random name generator that they use for their products. But anyway, um, so this product is actually made by a company called Xiaomi. It's a Chinese company. Probably not surprised by that, right? Um, Xiaomi, they actually make quite a few electronics. So um, it's actually it's actually pretty cool that they make vacuums as well. Uh, as you can see, I have quite the collection of robots. That's a shark robot. Roborock S6. This is the DreamBot. And then, of course, I also put up our little robot that we actually bought to check in on our dog while we were away. This thing's pretty sweet. Um, it's got a little laser for, for cats as well, if you want to use it for playing around with cats remotely. Um, but then it also has a little food dispenser, and it'll just shoot it out, which is pretty cool. I brought that out here because the DreamBot, as you can see, also has a sweet little camera and inside of the app you can actually remotely log in to your robot drive this thing around your house and actually use it as its own little security drone which is a uh, pretty wild shit right like what what the hell like these these vacuums are just getting absolutely insane uh, I mean it's what a time to be alive right like you just I'm just working and these little vacuums just go off and start cleaning my house for me. I mean, talk about first world problems, right? So, do I like this robot, yes or no? The answer is I love this robot, okay? Uh, it hasn't given me any issues. We've actually been using it now for the past few weeks. What's really nice about it, like all of these vacuums, is that you can actually set your own schedule for when you want it to go out and clean. Uh, it also has object recognition, so if you got kids or if you got pets, when this thing drives around your house and uh, let's say your kids put a toy somewhere, your dog drops her toy somewhere, it'll recognize that object and actually clean around it, which is uh, always fantastic in case your dog does actually have an accident within your house. It doesn't smear that stuff all over the place. Always a plus. The AI object recognition, it you can actually train the model to be a little bit more efficient. So when it takes a picture of an object that it detects, you can then go into the app and say, no, it's actually something else. So you can actually contribute to the AI recognition system uh, getting that much better. Each of these robots, they do use LiDAR at the very top, which is what you see here. Uh, and what that does is it shoots out a bunch of lasers all over your house and helps to map helps to navigate and it also helps to for the robot to adjust to an ever moving environment which is always uh, which is always very important because your home is never always the same right um, there's always uh, you know you're putting new stuff all over the place let's say you got an Amazon package and you put it on the ground your robots gonna have the ability to detect that and go around it so uh, what else does it have so inside of here, like I said, it has it has two different uh, canisters: one for clean, one for dirty. Has up to sixty days of storage for um, for dirt, dust, all that good stuff. There's a little bag in here. Unfortunately, yes, um, you do need an actual bag. The cool thing is that inside of here, there's a little. Uh, tool that helps to detangle some of the hair that gets caught in, uh, into the uh, the brush. What else? Um, this shark robot also has an auto empty capability. The nice thing is that it, you don't actually need any bags, just in the, this little canister here. This right here is actually my garage robot, an absolute game changer, I must say. Uh, if you're looking for a like a really cheap little robot that has the ability to auto uh, empty its canister when it's done cleaning, I think I bought this for like 269 bucks for the garage. Absolutely fantastic. I have a little. I have had some issues here and there. For example, this little guy he did get himself uh, caught in a corner, and basically just gave up on life. And and when I was walking out into my car, I was like, where the hell is a robot? And I found him off in the corner, just stuck by himself. 
The other day, this thing actually ran out of uh, battery power and it was really strange because it did actually dock itself, but it actually ran out of power. And the only reason why I knew that is because this area here has a tendency to get pretty dirty and dusty. And I was like, wait a minute, how come this area hasn't been clean? Well, come to find out this little guy uh, had actually ran out of power, so it wasn't running for a few days. Uh, in the back here, there's a little door. Uh, it sucked up a twig, and for some reason that door wouldn't close. And so it was also faulting out. So um, overall, though, the experience, easily an 8 out of 10. I will say that between the three of these, um, this one has the worse off app. So with the Roborock and the DreamBot, um, inside of the app, when it's cleaning, you can actually see in real time where the robot is in your house. With this thing, uh, it doesn't actually show you that. It just shows you a picture or the map of where it's currently cleaning. Uh, the Roborock S6, that was the first robot that I had uh, purchased in many, many years. I had actually had the second generation of the Roomba that came out many years ago. And that thing was terrible. Okay, it didn't, it didn't last very long and it didn't have any intelligence whatsoever. So it would just drive around your house and ping pong off your furniture, the walls, until it felt satisfied that it cleaned everything and quite often it, it missed uh, a ton of spaces. So if you're looking for a cheap robot that is very good, I would definitely recommend the Roborock S6. Of course, as you can see, it doesn't have the auto empty capability However, in our home, uh, our home is about 2,000 square feet, and I would say 75% of it is hard surface, and then the rest would be carpet. Uh, we don't have to empty this thing very often, but it, of course, it is always nice to have the uh, auto self-emptying bin because these things essentially are relatively maintenance-free, right? Like I said, uh, this little guy did... Um, uh, somehow managed to get himself caught in the corner. This little guy, the only issues that I've had with him is that inside of our house we have a desk and that desk has a very long, low feet. And for some reason, this little guy likes to just ramp and he'll, he'll get himself caught up and then you hear him air out go ding ding and next thing you know, he's screaming for help. So that happens every once in a while. This little guy, we've had no issues whatsoever. Um, it just it just goes off and, and does its own thing and, and self-manages itself. Um, it has the ability that, so when it goes out and mops, the robot will actually come back, it'll clean its pads, refill its tank so it gets the mop, uh, mopping pads wet again, goes out, cleans again, when it comes back, it'll empty all of the contents, both what it's vacuumed and what it's cleaned at the very top there. And then as a last and final step, it'll clean the pads one more time. And then it also dries the pads. Come on. Come on. That's crazy. That's insanity. The Robo Rock, they actually just announced one at CES that does everything that this one does. Now, the thing about Robo Rock is they've made one hell of a name for, their, for themselves because their, their, their vacuums are really good, okay? Now this one here, it actually has, let me see if I can turn this around without breaking this. Oh boy, this is gonna be terrible. So as you can see here, it actually has two circular discs and my thought process when I was looking for these robots that actually mopped as well is that these pads would work better than this one here. This actually has an adapter for a pad, but all it does is it quite literally just drags the pad across the floor. It doesn't do anything. But the newer versions of Roborock, they have this... Wheels like, are not in contact with the ground. Please reposition the robot and start it again. Well, there you go. Um, this one here, the newer versions, they have this like ultrasonic sensor robo pad mop thingy where instead of spinning in a circle, it's just a gigantic pad that spins side to side and it does it quite fast. Very much like those um, ultrasonic toothbrushes, right? And those things, I have no idea how Roborock does it. 
But in many cases, those little pads will actually clean better than this one will. Um, in my opinion, our floors haven't looked uh, as good. Even when we moved into our house, like when we bought our home, uh, there was still a bunch of stuff left over from construction. But this thing, it goes out uh, a couple of times a week and, and it keeps our floor uh, very clean. So I'm, I'm very happy with this. One downside though, by having these two gigantic pads, as you can see here, it doesn't it doesn't protrude out from the sides, meaning that it doesn't actually clean, um, you know, along the wall. So keep that in mind, because over time, obviously that that grime uh, along the edges of the the wall are going to build up. But there is a newer version. Um, not from this brand, but there's another company that's making them on Kickstarter, I believe. And those ones actually have four smaller discs uh, behind. And then the, the smaller disc is actually, uh, it's actually big enough that it protrudes out the side here. So that as it's uh, cleaning along the edge of the wall, it'll also mop along the edge of the wall. Obviously, it does have this little, this little uh, side brush here, but... Um, you know, over time, dust is eventually going to build up. This thing does retail for, let's see, on the website, I think it retails for like 1300 bucks. Yep, there we go. Retails for about 1300 uh, On their website, it lists it for $1,100, but off, I actually bought mine off of Amazon. They often hot times have discounts on Amazon, and so I bought mine for 1000 bucks. So don't pay full retail price on this. Uh, I think this has actually been on the market since September of 2022. Some of the original models that they made uh, inside of the back here, there's actually a little a little tube that goes down that brings the water down. From the factory, it had issues creating a suction within there, and so the water wasn't actually coming down. I am happy to say that in the newer versions, they did fix that, so I had no issues whatsoever. But that's definitely uh, something to keep mindful of. Make sure you, um, when you get this thing fully uh, booted up and you plug it in, I made the mistake of running this before it had fully charged. And so I went out, I tried to map, and then eventually just came back and said, okay, I, I'm actually out of power. Um, the initial boot up of this, really quick, it uh, has the ability to... Uh, either clean your house for the first time so like as it goes out and cleans it's going to learn on the go and create that map for you or you can also set it out for the initial mapping process and that's very quick I mean the robot literally just goes out maps your home and then comes back to base so don't make the mistake I did which is I try to clean my house and this thing was I don't know probably not even like halfway filled so from the factory it doesn't come fully charged which uh, that's probably not surprising, right? So overall, now that now that I've had this for a few weeks, uh, I'm actually quite spoiled with this thing because this is this is pretty. So after all of these years, right, of developing robotic vacuums and now mops, this thing is where I think most people had kind of envisioned where these robotic vacuums and mops would go which is that they are relatively maintenance free. And I say relatively maintenance because you do have to empty the container, but I wouldn't, I would not doubt it if they eventually start to design these things so that they have like an actual tube where you can hook into your own plumbing system so that, well, you don't have to do anything, right? You just occasionally check in to make sure that the side brush is still good, that the brush is entangled up. Uh, sometimes like the Roborock, it does tell you to clean the sensors um, but I mean, these things are just absolutely amazing, uh, game changer. I don't, one, one function that I don't use, uh, like a dedicated function is the vacuum on this. So when this goes out in vacuum or mops, I do say that I also want it to vacuum as well as it goes, but for the carpet areas, I do use the Robo Rock. I think it's a, a better vacuum for, uh, cleaning up carpets. So I am going to continue to keep this one. I'm obviously going to continue to keep this one. The shark, 
Now this has been a really great vacuum for the garage, but that thing has gotten me spoiled. So I am more than likely gonna upgrade this, which is kind of a shame. Uh, well, actually not really, <laughs> right? Like I really want our floors to be clean. Um, you know, th them getting vacuum always a plus, but just the thought of this floor, the space in here, as you can see, I have dark floors. Um, having it vacuumed and clean on a nightly basis was, would be amazing. So I'm definitely going to look into uh, finding, I don't know if I want to pay another $1,100 or a thousand bucks for that. So yeah, I'm going to keep the shark robot, but I'm definitely going to upgrade it so that it has the ability to mop as well. All right, also, uh, I decided to add in a video of the actual DreamBot um, going around my house and cleaning in our living room. As you can see in this initial clip, it does actually show um, our dog's chew toy. Um, I just placed it in front of the DreamBot as it was cleaning, and uh, it did a great job of actually detecting the actual dog toy itself. And as you can see, it's uh, it's going around. It's little side brush slowly um, uh, actually slows down, and then it kind of goes off on its own. Now, this spot here, I definitely want to say that this was a challenging spot for the uh, for the actual robot, because as you can see, uh, it's dealing with the legs not only on the, uh, the the chair in the back, but then it's also dealing with the slim legs on the trampoline. But then watch as it, um, you know, tries to go over the actual rug itself. You'll notice um, throughout many times in the uh, in the actual clip, the clip itself is over 11 minutes, by the way. And you'll notice that uh, it does actually get confused between the hard surface and the actual um, rug itself. And when it goes over the rug, it actually still spins the pads for a brief second. And then as it goes back over the hard surface again, it starts to, you know, once again, spin the pads while it's actively on the, on the carpet. So definitely take that into account. If you want to use this vacuum as like your all in one uh, robot that does vacuuming and mopping at the same time. Yeah, there's a perfect example there where the pads went down, you know, like a fraction of a second while it had already been off of the, uh, the actual um, rug itself. See how it spins? Just like that. So, I'm definitely hoping that a future software version will actually improve on that. Uh, I would assume it's more of a software uh, limitation than it is hardware. Um, but you can perfectly see that uh, it does actually raise the pads when it goes on and off the carpet. Um, this is the DreamBot actually going back to its home base because it's getting ready to clean its pads. And this is just kind of a perfect example of the robot just, you know, doing its own thing. And that's what's amazing about these robots, right, is um, in many ways they are out of, so out of sight and out of mind. So it doesn't really matter if this thing takes an hour to clean your living room, right? Like it's it's the one doing the cleaning. You're off just kind of doing your own thing. So you might say, well, it'll only take me 20 minutes to clean, you know, my living room and it takes this robot an hour, but it, it doesn't really matter because it's not you spending the hour doing it, right? That's the whole purpose of these uh, little robots is to do a lot of those tasks for you. Uh, and so I'll let you guys have a listen and, and you know, you can see it dock itself. Uh, it's also going to clean the pads and refill.
All right, so the DreamBot is done and it's gonna be going back to its previous position uh, where it was cleaning. And as it makes its way out of our laundry room and then goes into um, you know, the actual hallway there, I want you to take a look and see that uh, behind it, even though the, the pads are up because it's not actively cleaning, you'll actually notice that uh, it does actually leave streaks on the floor as it goes back to its previous position. Um, that's something that you you do want to be mindful of because if you set your um, you know the docking station where it has to go over carpet to go to a hardwood or a hard surface, um, you do want to be mindful that you know technically although these pads are clean, uh, these pads have been you know going all over your dirty floors, and so there is the potential that it might stain some of your uh, carpeting if it's constantly making that back and forth movement. If you know, if you have a, a similar setup like ours where we just have a rug and then it goes over the hard surface, it's not necessarily a big deal. But when you have carpet, obviously you're probably gonna wanna keep your carpet in, in uh, you know, pristine condition. Um, but obviously it's gonna depend on you know, what your household is like. If you got kids or pets, well, in that case, <laughs> you're, you're basically just trying to keep up, right? Uh, our house, you know, we do have like, uh, I guess you could say we're, we are a little bit like minimalist where we don't like a, a ton of clutter. Uh, and so in that case, robots like these are actually quite good. And robots like these are really great if you do have a family, right? Like kids are going to throw their toys everywhere. You know, uh, dogs are going to, you know, throw their toys everywhere as well. And so the fact that you can have these robots that are smart enough to adapt to your environment, that's huge. Um, you know, it's taken, what, over 15 years just to get to this point on, on um, these automatic robots. So uh, they've come a long, day, a long way since those uh, rumored days where they would just bounce off of the uh, off of walls, off of, <laughs> off of people and pets. Um, so it's, it's, it's really neat watching these things just kind of roam around the house and, and pick up the pad, uh, you know, pick up its mopping pads. Uh, Obviously, the, the whole function of picking up the pad would be occurring a little bit faster, but overall, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to watch it kind of work. So one thing that I'd like to mention too is uh, how noisy this uh, is. So if I were to compare this to the Roborock, it, it's probably about the same. And I wanna say it's probably like around 50 to 55 decibels. Um, in the video, you can actually hear it get louder as um, you know it switches between vacuuming and the actual mopping function. When it's in just the mopping function, is it is actually quite uh, quiet. So if your only intention is to just use this thing for mopping, uh, it's actually a little bit quieter than the Roborock, 
when it's uh, in the, the vacuuming mode. Uh, as you heard in the, in the previous, uh, a little bit earlier in the clip, when it's actually cleaning the mopping pad and you know taking out and emptying the dirty water, uh, it can actually be loud, which is one of the reasons why we moved it into the laundry room. Originally, our Robo Rock was in the living room. We had no issues with it, but now that we have both vacuums and this dual purpose, you know, vacuum mop can do pretty much the whole thing. Uh, we moved it into the laundry room because it, it can actually be noisy and we both work from home and this thing goes off right around noon and sometimes we are on calls so we'd rather have this thing uh, going off while it's in the laundry room um, you know versus uh, it being out in the open and we can hear all that stuff on our call um, this clip that you're watching now is actually an earlier clip that I had recorded um, and it just kind of shows you how it's making that transition over the uh, the actual rug as you can see there it did, it did actually lift up the rug and um, you'll actually notice that a few more times throughout the clip but I think this is such a like a, a great example of uh, documenting how the mopping pad goes down and then how it goes back up as it actually detects um, that transition between you know the, uh, the, the rug and the hard surface um, there can definitely be some improvements like I said earlier and that little light that you see uh, you don't actually see that in person I think it's actually just being uh, picked up by the camera. So I do also want to mention that in the app, um, you can actually do a lot of customizing as to um, not only your cleaning schedule, but also you can set things for certain parts of the room and you can also subdivide rooms if you needed to. But what's really cool is that within the app, you can say, hey, for this particular room, in this case our living room, we want full suction of the vacuum. We want you to also mop you can also set the wetness of the pads. So let's say you have a high traffic area. You can have that your mopping pad to be very wet. And then you can also set the amount of passes that it does. So if you want it to do one pass or two passes or three passes, you can actually do that, which is really nice, right? A lot of times with these vacuums, you use them for those weekly maintenance, either vacuuming. Uh, in our case, we now can mop. Or you can also use it now to actually do that deep cleaner, right? So the, the chances of it being able to pick up all the, all the dirt uh, with three passes is a lot better than only having that single pass. I think here in this clip too is also kind of a great example as to um, how you can see around the legs that it's not actually cleaning all the way up to the leg. It does that same thing against the wall as well. It gets pretty close. Um, but you're still going to have that area very close to the wall that um, it doesn't get clean. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. All right, all. So that was a review of the DreamBot. What the hell was the name of it? DreamBot L10S Ultra. Uh, again, it retails for $1,300, but you can often find it on sale at Amazon for $1,000. Uh, 
Uh, it's definitely going to be our go-to vacuum going forward. And like I said, I like that, uh, you know, that dual purpose so much that I'm looking into upgrading the Shark Robot for the, uh, for the garage as well. Anyway, uh, if you like these, if you want to purchase some of these robots, I'll include a link in the description. And if you do purchase uh, using my link, uh, please just be aware that I do actually get a, uh, an affiliate commission for that as well. Um, but overall, I appreciate you watching my video. If you got any questions about the robot, just let me know. See ya. Take care.